In this training video, we're going to cover stinger transitions and how you can use them in your vMix video production. Stinger transitions are a great way to spice up your transition by adding some animation to them. In order to get started, you're going to need an MOV file with an alpha channel that you can use for your transition. Now we've downloaded a transition from a place called videoblocks.com where we have an annual subscription to download stock videos and things like transitions. There's plenty other websites out there that offer these same sort of features. Or you can create your own animated transition within your own video editing program. There's two ways to create singer transitions in vMix. The first way is to use an MOV file itself. However, this is CPU intensive and it doesn't allow you to actually uh, select the frame in which you want the transition to take place. So the best way to do it is by using an image sequence. And I'm going to show you how to create an image sequence right now. So you've downloaded your MOV file and what you need to do is put it into its own folder. So I've created a Stinger folder on the desktop and we've put our bursting energy beam MOV file in that folder. So then what you need to do is search for a program called vMix Video Tools. Now this vMix Video Tools is associated with vMix and allows you to do certain functions. So from the task, what we want to do is create image sequence. Then we want to select the MOV file that is in our Stinger folder. Open it. So you'll see the source file there. We'll see the output. Now this is why we put it into a folder by itself because the image sequence will be created in that same folder. So then we click convert. And close that vMix video tools down. And now we've got all of our PNG files in the image sequence that have been created from our MOV file. All right, so now we can look at adding the image sequence as a stinger. So go to add input, and then we need to go to image sequence slash stinger, browse, and what we wanna do is select the very first PNG image that we have here. So 00001 from the stinger folder. So just select that one image and then click open and then okay. So that will load up all of those images as its own uh, image sequence and we'll display them when we hit play. So that's the same as our MOV file, but now it's been split into an image sequence. Now in order to set up the stinger, we need to go to the overlay section. This is where you can set up your stingers. So we'll go to stinger one and what we want it to be is a full screen and the effect is cut, which gives us the best effect for stinger transitions. You can select the effect duration um, for how long you want the cut. And then the duration represents how many frames there are in that image sequence. So you can see here, we've got milliseconds and frames. If you select frames, you can pinpoint the frame in which you want the transition to take place. And then the stinger input here, we've, it's already preloaded as the bursting image beam 00001.png. Okay, and the most important part here is the stinger cut point. Now the stinger cut point represents the point in which the transition takes place between the two inputs. So we'll go back to our production and then we'll work out what point we want it to transition. So we'll go along, we'll see the energy beam and we want it, what we want to do max effect, yes, 60, 64, 65. So it covers the whole screen and then that's where we want the transition to perform. So we'll use 65. So we'll go back to settings and use the stinger cut point as 65 and then we'll click OK. So we're almost done. Um, the next we need to go to the settings and we need to go to the color adjust section and we need to select pre-multiplied alpha. Now typically this will need to be selected for MOV files with an alpha channel. If you select it and it looks strange, then unselect it, but typically you will need to have this selected. So we've ticked that and we're right to go. And uh, what you'll need to do then, typically in your VMX production, you won't have this thing here. So you'll need to click the arrow and you'll need to select stinger one. So you can have that in your transition preset so you can use it when you need to. So we'll load up the other video here and we'll test out our stinger. As you can see, hits frame 65 and magically transitions. We'll try it again. Okay, so that's the best way to set up a stinger transition within vMix. As I mentioned before, the other way to do it would be to add a video input and then use the actual MOV file. So if you had audio and you really wanted to do it this way, then you could. However, like I said, it uses a lot more CPU 
and it's not as specific as the uh, using the image sequence. So it's not the best way to do it. So we'll click, we'll click open there and then okay. So then you'd need to set up, set it up the same way, use pre-multiplied alpha. Then you would want to go to st use stinger two because we're using stinger one. And here you would need to use milliseconds. So you would need to work out how long you wanted the transition to go for, like when, uh, sorry, at what point you wanted the transition to happen, how long the, the video was. And then you would also need to select the MOV file for the Stinger input here. So uh, it's a little bit more advanced and it's, like I said, more CPU intense. So the best way to do it is to create the image sequence. So we're not gonna go all the way through with that. I'm just gonna cancel that there. So that's how you set up an image um, sequence transition uh, for a Stinger. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, um, leave them below.